It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Monday, June 24th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that thinks Danny Breer was pulling a fast one at that presser when it comes to Matt Vay Mitchcock. He was. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports store stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can find our show over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What a turn of events on Sunday, Russ. Uh, just, you know, out living your life. And uh, all of a sudden, Matt Vay Mitchkoff's contract is terminated with Siska in St. Petersburg and is apparently on the way. Yeah, but on the way means he's got to go get a visa. He's got to wait for that. They got to sign up a new contract. You know, everybody's both parties have to approve. So I, I don't think he's making dev camp. I don't think that's happening. That's July 1st it's, or 2nd. I don't think it's going to happen. No, I don't think so either, but I don't care. And right. I don't think I don't anybody care else cares. No, but just people were asking. That's all. Yeah. The timeline I think doesn't people, seem to match up. Listen, like if he was at dev camp, the uh, rink in Voorhees would be packed. Uh, yeah, for no that. it's going to be busy oh. anyway, yeah. but like when it comes down to rookie camp, ooh, it's going to, it is going to be a time. And I, for one, am excited about it. Um, I think, you know, going back to when these rumors first started, you and I were excited, but also like cautious a little mm-hmm. bit about it. And, you know, I think we did take a little bit of heat for that, but I think. Th- it is true. There's no way to know what he's going to be like as an NHL player right now. Is he going to be an, a great NHL player? Probably, I would say. But is he there now? I would say no. So I think just it's important for us to be excited, but also have the patience for him to make the adjustments he needs to here, right? Yeah, you got to treat him like any other developing prospect that's coming in. That's it. You know he's got a high ceiling, but he still has to learn the NHL game. He's not been playing the NHL game. And so there's there's lots for him to do. And as a result, you've got to just – that's how you have to treat it. You could have whatever hopes and dreams you want. We're not here to crush them. But the point is uh, you got to see how he goes. you got to see how he goes with the coach. There's going to be all kinds of adjustments here. and And so – You don't know who's playing with them yet. You know, the ability to to even get points on that line. Plus, if, you know, if if the coach is going to hold true to play away from the puck, well, then he's really going to have to really adhere to that. And that could affect his offensive game for a little while, too. Yeah, I think, you know, that's for me where I have to just keep that in mind every time he's out on the ice is that based on the system that the Flyers currently have, He is going to have to build out the rest of his game. And I have no doubt that his offensive game is going to suffer a little bit as a result. And I think, you know, we saw that with Joel Farabee a little bit. Um, And I think, you know, we've seen that with multiple players. Uh, It took Tyson Forster a while for his offensive game Mm -hmm. to click back in. Like once the rest of his game was just muscle memory and he didn't have to think about it then he started racking up points, right? So I think we have to think about it along those lines. And I think everything's going to be fine. I just, you know, I don't, 
want to expect just points upon points upon points right away. Right. I mean, you know, he was playing up in a men's league. He wasn't more than a point a game. So he's not coming in here with like these unbelievable credentials yet. This is like the early part of like anybody's career. Like this is, this is what it is. A lot of times when you see the other Russian players come over, they're older. So we saw Kaprizov didn't come over until he was what? Like 24? 24. Yeah. I'm looking to see um, one that he gets compared to what age. Uh, yeah. Panarin 24. So, so it, it's a different set of expectations and yes uh but man like i just can't even imagine the jersey sales that are gonna happen oh yeah they're gonna have a lot of them it's gonna be great now i think you know mitch Koff himself aside obviously this is gonna affect the lineup as a whole mm -hmm. right so i think you know where do you see him in the lineup and who of the current flyers do you think it makes the most sense for him to play with I think he's got to play with Morgan Frost because he's the only one fast enough and creative enough that at the center position that could, you know, play his style of game. And so I think that's the first guy they have to try and link him up with. Yeah, I think so too. I think that would make a really good combination. Um, you know, is, is that a third line to start off with? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a third line. could be a second line. I don't think that matters all that much. Uh, I think, People just have to temper it in the sense that uh, the Flyers have to be careful. They can go out and get a center, right, and lay out a lot of assets. And if that center doesn't mesh with Mishkov, then you've gotten a center who's probably still going to you know, be good for the team, but not with what you were hoping. It's always better, my personal uh, experience with looking at this situation, is it's always better to have somebody who's already been there within – He's there. He's, you know, he's young enough. He could, you know, talk the lingo with Mitch Koff. He could show him the flyer's way, all that stuff. And that's why Frost is a really good candidate. You have Couturier there for, you know, questions and whatever, too. But Couturier can't play with Mitch Koff. No, he, that's just, he can't. Right. So, and I think the next question that I ask is, what does that mean for Bobby Brink? Yeah, Bobby Brink's in trouble. Like, he was in trouble anyhow. And he might still get an invite to camp. I'm sure he will. He's under contract. But he could get included in the deal. Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, Does he have one obviously. Year left? Yeah, obvious. No, I think Bobby Brink. Is he, is he a UFA? I don't think so. Is He's not a UFA. An RFA? No. One more year? No, he's got one more year. Yeah, he's got one more year. So he'll be in camp, but unless he gets traded beforehand. That's what my brain was trying to figure out as we tape early in the morning. So I think, yeah, I think Brink is in is in trouble. Yeah, I think, you know, given that, that kind of eats up that forward spot on the roster. And so it also has a cascading effect on the blue line because there was either room for one forward and one defenseman or two defensemen, depending or on how they wanted to do it with, you know, with the number of roster spots. And I think now that kind of locks in that there'll be no further defensemen moving up this year. Most likely, unless, you know, injuries or something. Uh, the other option. Injuries is, or trades. <laughs> right. The other option that, that popped in my head is if you still believe in Brink, then you just buy out Nick Deloria. Yeah, that is an option as well. But I honestly think it's a good problem to have. You just got to solve it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, no, it's a good problem to have. But but now the Flyers are changing. And so, like, you know, some of these, there's guys that have been there, some of these older guys that you don't need them anymore. Yeah, and I, I honestly think that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, there's a reason why you have bridge guys when you're in a rebuild. Right. And then eventually that need runs out and right and you move on to the next phase and yes man this is exciting times for the flyers i can't wait for all the fanfare around the contract signing and all of that we oh, will yeah. talk about it as it happens in the meantime the stanley cup final is still going and we have uh, a game seven to talk about and we will do that coming up next 
I love sports. I love them so much I never want them to stop. But as the playoffs wind down, we get fewer games, and the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to, too. Okay? But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream. Dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a booster or bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. I, I Right now, I go with the Phillies. The Phillies are awfully hot. Uh, so head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. All right. Well, uh, if you had asked me a week ago, even if there would be a game seven, I would have put it maybe at like 25%, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, when we talked about the Stanley Cup final earlier, we had said it'll be the Panthers in five or seven, but not six. And right. I feel pretty good about that aspect of it in terms of if there was a game six, the Oilers were definitely going to win. And that, of course, came to fruition in a big way. And I just, I mean, being up three nothing and then the Oilers forcing a game seven. I just don't think I can recall a team being this dominant in the playoffs and just shutting teams down like, like a machine. Right. And then all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore and they right. don't know what to do. Like it's been just fascinating. I think, and then look, both teams adhere to this, but I think at the beginning, Edmonton was just beat up, just tired enough that they were on the ropes. And I do think these extra two days in between some of these games have helped them. It's definitely helped Drysaddle. Drysaddle yeah. would look like he was on his last leg, and now he looks pretty good again. So, But it works that way for both teams. I'm just saying I think it benefited Edmonton more. And so I think that got them back in the series as much as anything else. But they're playing a better brand of defense, too. And the last game, Florida was looking a little uh, a little slow there. So now they're really, you know, going through the ebbs and flows. And it's nice to see this kind of competition. And we'll see. I mean, I don't know. We always put too much emphasis on big name players in these games. And what I found is it's the smaller name players a lot of times that win these games too. You know, you got Mike Rupp in 03. He's one of the bigger of the smaller names that have won a Stanley cup, but um, somebody who I really didn't think has produced all that much, but does it occasionally like Vlad Tarasenko. He's a guy that I actually think would be dangerous in this game because he's won a cup yeah. and, and he, um, and he's been there. And so like, those are the kinds of guys now that, that can, and I want to say pop out of the weeds because Tarasenko was a former great, but he's not a big part of their offense. But those are the kinds of guys now that you have to look at. Adam Henrique for Edmonton has been coming on. I've been talking about him for about a week now. Like, he's a dangerous veteran that could do that. So these are the kinds of guys now that I watch more than the McDavid's and the Dry Sidles. And, and Barkov is certainly, last game, I mean, I don't know how else to say it. I, I understand what the NHL rule is. But somebody made a very good point. It may have been Sean McDonough. At the beginning with video, the original intent for offsides was just to show the egregious ones and show and showed like Danny Briere when he was like five feet over, right. you know, offsides like from it's years ago. It's always that example. It's that example. Um, but the thing is, now they're doing it frame by frame. And what was really funny about this is when ABC showed their view, it, it was blurry. You couldn't see anything. At least Sportsnet showed it and had the frame. But again, like players will tell you, and McDavid's been quoted on this and other players, how long do you want to watch this video until you make the decision? And that's the debate here. It's like you have these people that say, get it right, get it right. But, but the rule, the way it was set up with this video, that's not how it was intended to watch it like the Zabruder film. Yeah, and you know – this kind of happens with rules all the time in sports where yep. you see a problem, you try and solve it. And sometimes the solution creates another problem. Yeah. Right. 
And I, that's where we've gotten with this offside rules, that it is the letter of the law, but it is not the spirit of the law. Right. Uh, most of the time with these, like, it's a game of inches. And you have to look at, does the quote unquote offsides by half an inch or like, you know, a fraction of a skate blade create an unfair advantage for the team? Most of the time, the answer is no. And so what do you do in those situations? And how do you make it, you know, like, how do you adjust this rule at that point? Yeah, I think they need to adjust it. I think they need to say within a certain time period, like, we'll review this and we'll review it for three minutes. And that's it. And if we don't have a definitive right. answer in three minutes, then the ruling the on the ice, on the ice is, is good. Yeah. It's going to have to be that. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the compromise is give a limited amount of time to review it because that way you still have sort of the letter of the law there right. because if it's obvious, it'll be obvious. And then you just decide and move on. Right. But if yeah. it's not obvious, then you you let the officials do their work. Because this can bite Edmonton too. You know, the way this yeah. rule is, it has before in the past. That's why there's McDavid had spoken out about it. But the point on this one is, you do this, you wait so long. This was a momentum play by Barkov going to the yeah. net, getting a goal, answering back, and it killed momentum. Like, yeah. it just did. I mean, everybody would agree with that. That's the part of it that I think is the most upsetting if you're a Florida Panthers fan, because I think, you, like, the what if right. will haunt you for the rest of it eternity. Will. It will, because, like, you don't know what was going to happen in that game, but that was a quick answer back and it was somebody taking the team on their back. And then all of a sudden it's like, Nope, no. <laughs> and it is demoralized when you get one taken off the board. We've seen it many times. Yeah. I don't know, man. That's why this game, I think if you had told me sort of before the series, if it gets to a game seven, you know, if we do the game seven option, who wins, I would have said Florida, like no problem. And now I'm just like, honestly, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know the answer. It's a coin toss. This is a coin toss for me. It's a coin toss. I don't know the answer. I would have to say, you know, the best thing I could say is I think both teams are going to play differently. Because now it's a one-game winner-take-all. It's different now. Yeah, no team has the lead. A little conservative. I think so. Um, but, oh, God. Is, is overtime the dream or the nightmare? Uh... I mean, it could be the dream. Uh, listen, Game Sevens. I, I've I've covered Game Seven Stanley Cups, and there is nothing like it. You know, the two that jump out are the O three and O um, four, right? Then O four go to seven two with Florida and Calgary, with Tampa and Calgary. Um, so yeah, it's an amazing thing when you can cover it. So I just, I think it's the dream if it goes to overtime because then it's like this is it. We all yeah. like that. Do or yeah. die, so to speak. Yep. Well, uh, there's a lot on the line. There's a lot of pride for Florida here after last season and getting back this season and being dominant and having it go down this way. A lot, a lot of pride on the line. For Edmonton, it's the hopes and dreams of an entire nation. So no pressure there. No pressure at all. All right. Uh, we have a. Uh, summer world junior showcase and team usa has been at least their camp has been named we want to talk about that a little bit as well as our new poll of the week and our nemesis of the week we'll do all of that coming up next passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your parts are guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. All right, Russ, uh, with everything going on with the draft this week, uh, which we didn't even mention so far, <laughs> Uh, which is crazy because it's draft week. Uh, there is also a World Junior Summer Showcase happening in July and August. And that's just a mini tournament of the U.S., Canada, Finland, and Sweden for countries to help fine tune maybe their systems and who they want on their World Junior squad uh, coming up next winter. And um, with the U.S. squad being announced, it's always interesting because it's a mix of guys who were just drafted last year, draft eligible prospects for this year, and maybe a couple from the next year. Uh, it, it is a, a mix. So how does the team use this camp and uh, anybody you're excited to see? Yeah, this this camp's loaded. I mean, there's always going to be a player or two that you could say, hey, you know, I'm surprised. But they have everything covered as far as positions, goalie, you know, left defense, right defense, all the different players. So I think it's a matter of, you know, who's there that, you know, you ask the question, who's there that I'm I'm happy to see there that's maybe uh, a little different. So one of them is Tanner Adams. Like this is a guy who I, I did bring him up when we were doing the uh, the EP ringside guide because. I had spotted him in the USHL. He's a Long Island kid. He actually was a um, first year, you know, he was a freshman starter at Providence. He had 21 points in 35 games, which is really solid for a guy who's like not Adam Fantilli or not Max right. Pellegrini. And he still did that. And you know, he's got a little bit of everything. He's got tools in the toolbox. He can score a little bit. He's got good speed. He can play wing. He can play center. He's played against men. It's good that they put him in there because, like, you know, he only played a couple of games with the NTDP. But, I, you know, like I said, I did spot him. And so, he, you know, this is a name that I brought up. You know, his his rankings are really, you know, he's like 168, 170. Like, some team's going to draft him in the fourth, fifth round. But he could surprise people. Like, this guy could play. And so, like, for a tournament like this, if he comes in the camp, you know, gangbusters, you know, he can make the team. Uh, so that's the thing where you look at him. Uh, another one, John Whipple, is an interesting one because uh, he he's always been on the NTDP. He never gets talked about. He's going to get drafted. He's a big shutdown defenseman. And he's another guy that, Steady as she goes, good skater. You're not looking at him for points. He's got a pretty good shot. He might get a goal once in a while. But, you know, he's another one of those can really play the position kind of guys. And you might need that. You might look at the makeup of this team and say, all right, we've got to have to be a little bigger, a little, little more muscle on this team. Well, then John Whipple's your guy. So it's nice that that he got added. and. Aaron Manishan's another one. He um he got taken last year by Dallas in the fourth round. Now he's also, you know, was with the NTDP, a good offensive guy, not a great one, and played his first year in Boston College. And it was a pretty good year. You know, he um he had nine points in 40 games. He is the definitely an offensive defenseman, but does play tough in the corners. So he's kind of like that middle guy where it's like he's not your power play quarterback. There's there's other high higher guys for that, but he's that other kind of guy that can play five on five, get you some points, not hurt you defensively, because he's good defensively. And and so, but he's five eleven. So again, it's gonna depend on do we want a big team? Do we want to you know, or do we want to mix it? That's where it'll be maybe a little harder for him to make it. But it's good that they included him. Because he's a talented guy and he's been in the system. That's cool to hear. Um, I think, you know, we'll see what happens with the draft and if any flyers, new flyers, draftees are on this list uh, as as that continues and when the other countries announce their camps, et cetera, and, and what these rosters look like at the summer showcase. But um, always a good time as we you know, turn the page to next year's 
World Juniors and, and getting ramped up for that. For our new weekly poll, I think, you know, with our earlier discussion about the arrival of Matvey Michkov, I think uh, it's, you know, the question is, do the Flyers need to get a new center in order to have someone for him to play with? We talked about Morgan Frost, but is that the right option? So this week's poll is, would you like to see the Flyers move up in the draft or trade for a center? You can't pick both. So your options are yes, move up in the draft and moving up from the 12th overall pick and yes, moving up from the Florida pick, trading for a center or doing nothing and making your existing picks and don't make a trade. Yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, because you could trade trade up. The biggest thing is they could draft the center, right? If they do trade up, mm-hmm. they, can, they can get a center and maybe that guy's ready in three years, maybe two. If it's hilarious, they probably won't have a chance at Lidstrom, right? So you could do that or you could do nothing. I mean, it's, you know, it's a hard choice. Like, but I don't think they could do both. I've looked at the situation and, yeah, you know, if you're going to get a, a center who's not that old in the league and could really play with a Mitchkov, then you're going to give up one of your first round picks and a player to get that guy. Like, it's just going to, that's the way it's going to be. So that's why you can't have it all here. Yeah, I I think it is a good question. Looking forward to seeing what y'all out there uh, think the Flyers should do. And we will get to it as part of our draft preview, our final draft preview at the end of the week. Uh, What your results are, link in the show notes, and it will be on our YouTube channel. For our nemesis of the week, last week talked a lot about overthinking the draft uh, and not getting in your own head about it. And sometimes the answer is just right there for you. And um, I think with the change in plans for Mitch Koff, that just gets even more complicated and there's more overthinking to yep. do. So uh, I think that nemesis does continue. but. I think you have to add to that now because we are in draft week, all the trade rumors, which we saw last week, but I think it's only going to intensify and more teams are going to be involved in those rumors. And uh, it just feels like anything can happen this week. Any Anything definitely could happen. Um, my nemesis is going to be in the coming week, um, all the Mitch Koff experts that are out there now, ones that really haven't seen him play, ones that claim they're going to know about this situation. And yeah, it's like, none of us knew. None of us knew exactly when this was going to happen, if it was going to happen. A lot of things had to come together to to make this happen. And just seeing a few highlights doesn't mean you've really seen them play. So we all have to wait. And nobody likes to wait, Rachel. So now we're going to start seeing some of this craziness. Like, hey, he's coming here now. Now the Flyers are... Cup contender. I'm sure someone will say it. I don't know who, but who knows? Or, hey, they just missed the playoffs next year. Now that they have Mitch Cup, they're going to make the playoffs, right? I mean, it's easy to put that together. You never know. You don't know about any of these things. I don't know about these things. Because chemistry, you don't know what the chemistry is going to be. So that's that's my nemesis. It's just that whole feeling like of trying to predict what's going to happen before he gets here until we actually see him play even in preseason. So that's it. Yeah, and I think the adjustments are going to be the biggest thing. It's like, can he he adjust to the NHL? When he kind of learns the ropes, are other teams going to adjust to him? And how does he react and how do the Flyers react around that? Like, I think, so there's like two or three layers of adjustments that are going to have to happen. For sure. But I can't, I cannot wait to get on this ride. Uh, that'll do it for today's show. Thanks so much for listening. We will be back tomorrow with more Draft Week Madness. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's also available on the Amazon Fire TV in the Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Have a great day, everyone.